So I want to show you something about cover cropping and mulching today that uh, a lot of people I don't think get and certainly don't understand. And you might actually see some things happening in your garden and you might be like, hey, that's that could be bad. Maybe these are pests or problems. And I'm talking about pill bugs and other critters. Uh, so yesterday, so this has been one day, uh, I came out here and I have this safflower, part of my inner planting. And these broccoli in my climate, they are... They need to get with making me some broccoli because we got another few weeks of heat uh, coming and they're gonna start bolting and, and not do well. Good news is they're giving me some nice heads and I'll probably get a couple cuttings of side shoots after I take those big heads off these broccoli. And then these will go and something else will come in. But this safflower, if you look at it, you see how much taller it is than like its brother over there? That's because it wasn't getting any sun and it was really getting shaded out. So, you know, just to give it some room, and I knew these broccolis could handle it. I just took a couple of leaves off to open a space for it. And I haven't looked yet, but knowing what I know about how the cover cropping and mulching rotations have worked through my winters and the interplanting, which is basically a sparse cover crop, all these flowers you see down the center, that's like a sparse cover crop. You've got your productive crops and your cover crops growing together. I just bet we're gonna find all kinds of little creatures when we go on, oh, look it. See, pill bugs, pill bugs everywhere. And it rained today, so you'll notice that the surface is wet. It's actually dry under there. I'm sure it's wet just a couple millimeters down, but they're all doing their job, all right? And I've had people tell me, you know, Jack, you're wrong about pill bugs. They eat my plants. I've seen them do it. I found chewed up plants and I looked around them and I found these guys. But you notice that we do have some cabbage fly damage, which I'm not worried about because my, my jumper spiders are out here murdering caterpillars. It's actually pretty hard to find uh, many of them. I was I fed, found a couple and fed them to the fish in the pond yesterday. Um, but you don't see problems. I mean, there's, you know, there's broccoli there, there's fennel everywhere. I'm sure the black swallowtails will be on that eating it soon. And I just plant a lot of fennel so they could have it. This is carryover fennel. This, is, this fennel's over a year old right now. It's been through freezes and cutbacks, and that's my honey badger fennel. I'm going to hopefully get some seed out of it this year to keep it going. But we've got cucumber, you know. We've got more cucumber. We got peppers. We got all kinds of flowers. We got onion. We got basil. We've got tomato back there. We got, this is probably trombuchino squash. I'm not sure because I didn't plant it. So this is volunteer squash coming up, you know. We've got one more orphan broccoli plant over here. We've got tomatoes, more peppers. We just have very little insect damage. There we've got more fennel, peppers, peppers, peppers. If these little critters that live in the detritus, the detritus fear are so damaging, why does everything look so good this early in the year? And why aren't they eating? Because they don't eat it. Because they're decomp decomposition contributors in the ecosystem if you actually do see and i think it would be very rare but if you actually see a roly-poly a pill bug uh, that is actually feeding on one of your plants that plant is already dead or it's so close to dead that it's eating it's like when they put you know maggots on a person with a gangrene infection and a maggot eats the gangrene part off but doesn't eat the living flesh like that's what you're seeing and what this combination of keeping living root in the soil along with an annual mulching has done, there's another critter, right? Has done for my soil is really just unbelievable. You don't have to know a lot about soil science to look at this and understand what you're looking at is good soil. And what's beautiful about it is, and I wish you could feel it, the soil is, I don't know how to put it, it's dry and damp at the same time. It's never wet. It just rained, like I said, it was a pretty light rain, but if I turn the irrigation on and I irrigate this soil for half an hour and give it a half an hour after that, it will both, you know, go through the soil and distribute through the soil with what's called percolation. So percolation is part of the equation. I've been talking about infiltration, that's important. But you also need percolation, like can the water move up and down in the soil profile? That'll happen, and when you when you touch the soil, it's damp, 
but it's not wet. And that is what plants want. They don't want, I mean, unless you're growing bog plants, they don't want to grow in wet, sticky, nasty soil because that's anaerobic. And they don't want to be in completely dry soil. They want to be able to access as much moisture as they need when they need it. And that's what's happening here. But our little friends, right? I bet you there's more friends. Look, little friends there we go. Springtails bouncing around down in there. I don't know if you can see those on the camera, but there were a few when I first pulled it back. You know, what they're doing is they're eating this stuff. They're eating this dead decomposing matter and they're processing it. And so basically what you have is between the roots that died back when I killed the cover crop, the top growth of the cover crop that got put to the ground and the mulch that got put on top of it is you have the makings of compost. But it's not enough, it's not deep enough, it's not gonna be a hot active compost directly. It needs help. It needs to be broken down into smaller components and the earwigs, the pill bugs, all of those guys, the earthworms, who feed on the microbes more than the matter itself, they all kickstart this process and process this mulch into soil for you. And every year that you garden, and I don't care if you're gardening like me where this is just a one family garden, or if you are a market gardener that's doing this for a profit, every year it gets better. Right there, that was pretty sparse, but there's about a hundred onion plants in that space right there maybe 75 I guess and you can see that there is still some cover crop that didn't get terminated there's a little bit of barley still coming up occasionally I don't see any right here but there is a few uh bits of uh winter pea coming up I'm not worried about that that's fine you know as long as my productive species if you want to call them that have space to grow we've got you know look right here we've got Mouse melon, or Mexican sour gherkin. These are the ones that look like little watermelons, taste like cucumbers. We got nasturtium growing right next to each other. That nasturtium is gonna explode over the next month and I'll get all those beautiful flowers and I get to eat them and I get to eat the, the, the nasturtium leaves and all are very delicious. And in another two, three weeks after that, it'll all just turn yellow and die because it can't handle the heat that we get here. It will seasonally uh, fall out. And by then those mouse melons that love the heat They'll be up over that arch like they were last year. And last year, they ended up almost at the top of that tree. And that top of that tree is probably about 20 foot. That's a black locust. It's a nurse tree that is right in and integrated in the garden system. And our highest heat provides a dappled shade on this part of the garden. So we have shade plants here. But it all really hinges. And I mean, all of it hinges on the soil. And the soil has been formed into this gorgeous soil by following six basic principles of regenerative agriculture. And that's what's being put into my cover crop course. It is not gonna just be, hey, throw these seeds down, throw some shit on top of it, and then don't worry, your garden will be great. It's understanding the entire role of developing ecosystems in your garden to actually have a system that is cycling nutrient for you, that is composting for you. We do a lot of composting around here. But I don't want to have to do work to compost every day of my life. That's why I have my little allies that live in the soil profile, that live in this detritus. And again, if you look, you just really can't. You can't really put a value on being able to turn soil into this. And I have to tell you guys, this was not good soil. Uh, this was bought in, it was supposed to be a mix of 50% compost and 50% topsoil. It was junk garbage. It was gutless. It held no water. When you watered it, it infiltrated straight through. And if it dried out, if it dried out, it turned into concrete. As fine as it was and all, there's hardly any clay in it. When it, when it dried out, you couldn't barely dig with a garden trowel. And you'd wet it, you could dig again. But it had no life in it. It was dead. It was dead, and why'd you use it? Well, it's what I could get. But look at it now. Look at it now, and if you wanna learn how to do this, just keep paying attention to what we teach. We'll show you how to do that. That is a three-year-old chard plant right there. The students cut it to the ground when we cover crop this, and it grew back, and I cut it to the ground when I terminated the cover crop, and it grew back again. Squash, 
volunteered itself. That's where a squirrel ate the bottom out of one of my uh, Trumbachinos, and that's why I'm pretty sure that's what that is. I'll have to weed out some of that, but this wasn't planned, so we're gonna train it up this uh, trellis. And then see that tree over there? We're gonna run some mule tape that I recently put on the side through there and train that, block, that, that vine off that way because these things will grow 20, 30 foot long. And I want this trellis for the beans that are fixing to go in. So there's a tremendous amount of production coming out of these four beds that are not that big. And we have seasonal production where we have the broccoli coming in as our earliest crop this for this you know spring spring summer season, but tons of basil peppers. That's replanted freaking celery. I root them in the aquaponic system. We buy celery in the store. We eat it down to the cores. There's about three or four pieces left on it. That heart jam that thing down in an aquaponic system till it roots throw some mycorrhizal fungi on the roots and shove it in the ground and that'll grow for two years before it goes to seed and we'll have cutting celery from it there's just so much you can do if you will partner versus oppose nature and that's what so many people are doing you got to understand back to our little friends right f-r-e-n-s friends back to our little friends if i use pesticides in this garden they all die. And all of the pest insects, sure, they die at first. And then all the predators that eat them leave. And the next thing you know, I have an unbalanced system that's heavily weighted with pests and absent of predators. And absent of decomposers. And absent of earthworms. And absent of nitrogen-fixing bacteria. And absent of soil-building fungus. Absent of fungus that actually eats and kills, encircles and strangles and destroys nematodes. Nematodes? Yeah, I wouldn't want to be a nematode in here. See, there's a whole bunch of these flowers that are coming up. You know what those are? Those are marigolds. You know what happens when a, a nematode, a, a pest nematode finds a marigold? It's a goo yummy. And it burrows into the root to make a root knot. And then the marigold constricts around it and digests it and eats it. It's basically, marigolds are a different form of carnivorous plant. And by guys and gals. If you consider bacteria living things, they're all carnivorous because they literally eat bacteria. The relationship is far less symbiotic than it is predatory. Like I said, you wanna know more? Stay tuned early in the garden season, but you can see the explosive growth is about to kick off.